So final, final speaker in this panel, Zora Netscher, director of the Center for EU Integration, <clears throat> Institute for Democracy, uh, so Societa Civilis Macedonia. I thought that he was the lucky one, uh, you know, having opportunity to listen to everyone and then maybe to refer to things and to wrap up, but I don't know how difficult is that now. But you will be helping me, that's a good position, right? <laughs> I had to twist my speech a couple of times, and in the end I said I'm not going to read anything that I've written before, so I will just uh, go and reflect a bit of what has been said, and maybe to make uh, one or two points regarding the, the Berlin process. Um, so I think it's very essential about this specific mini intergovernmental process to mention that uh, when it started, and what was the main objective? What is the state of play now and how it can develop in the future? I think this wasn't mentioned by the previous speaker, so it will be in a way um, uh, new and fresh for, for the audience. Um, so soon after Juncker uh, won his bid for president of the European Commission, he told the European Parliament that there will be no further enlargement over the next five years of, of, his, of his mandate. Well, he also said that uh, ongoing negotiation with the two countries, Serbia and Montenegro, will uh, continue. He also referred that the European Union needs time to consolidate and digest uh, the addition of 13 new member states in the last 10 years. So this happened 2014, actually, that, uh, that is the same year when, when the German Chancellor Merkel said, okay, now we need, as obviously not much attention will be put by the Commission on the enlargement process, we need some kind of a international format that we are going to engage with the, our Western Balkan partners. And that, that is how the whole Berlin process as an idea um, uh, started. So this was the main objective, the main aim was to engage with the Western Balkan leaders, not to lose them from, from their site. The thing is that this, this Berlin format comes once a year, it lasts only for one day, and it's not follow up by regular meeting afterwards, after the declaration of the chair of, uh, of the host of the, of the Berlin process uh, will, be, will be published. And this is one of the, this is one of the biggest problems of, of, of this format of the Berlin process. And it also, uh, as it is a declaration, it gives a really difficult, a hard time for the civil society to monitor and to push the countries to report on what has been done over the period of, of one year. Uh, what is the state of play now? Uh, so, as it was uh, envisaged, um, the Berlin process should last for five years. That, that was the mandate of the Berlin process, and uh, if we count the summits and the years, this is the year when the, when the Berlin process should stop, as uh, London is approaching. So we had Berlin in the beginning, Vienna, Paris, Trieste, and, and London. But obviously, because of the uh, success of the process, uh, the engagement that the Western Balkan leaders gain, and uh, maybe, one, maybe the biggest success is that they began frequently seeing each other, discussing, discussing issues, and sometimes this also resulted in some, uh, uh, in some uh, tangible outputs. And I can mention RICO, for example, RICO as one of the most tangible ones, or uh, the Western Balkan uh, Fund that was created as a regional initiatives which come out of this, uh, of this Berlin process. In light of the, of, of, of the credible European perspective for, for the Western Balkan, I think that also the Berlin process should somehow, um, uh, let's say, reorganize or uh, redesign in order not to uh, in order to follow to complement the the new european perspective because much of the topics which are 
uh, which are put inside the credible European perspective are the same topics that the Berlin process is looking at. And if we have increased engagement by the Commission, then this will be in a kind of a overlapping. So uh, what the Berlin process looks at is connectivity, uh, SMEs development, regional economic integration, rule of law. These are all topics which are now in, in the new credible stat strategy. So if we want the process to continue and to produce results uh, and also to be interesting not only for the Western Balkan countries but also for the, uh, for the countries of the European Union that are engaged in, in the process, I think uh, a bit of a redesigning is needed in sense of to, to show some kind of you know, original approach. And because of, of the format, the intergovernmental format, I think that the, the process should focus more, uh, more on the political issues and to keep on building what, what has been started or initiated during these five years. And one of the issues or the topics which, are, which is of great importance is um, bilateral issues. It is in the credible strategy. It is mentioned that the European Union would not accept uh, countries which still have open bilateral issues. And because, of the, uh, because these, these bilateral issues are not very technical, they're more political, we need a process like the Berlin process to, for the leaders of these countries to continue talking about these problems. Because although in the meanwhile some new problems appeared, you, you can say that there are some settlements in, in, uh, uh, in, in the area of, of bilateral issues, and I can mention only uh, the last one, uh, the border dispute between uh, Kosovo and Montenegro. It is difficult to resolve these bilateral issues, but also this Berlin process gives a format when they can uh, discuss these uh, points. Besides the bilateral issues, uh, other issues that can be discussed which can differ a bit from the credible strategy is reconciliation. And this, is, this has been started and initiated through the Berlin process. It's nice if it continues and also uh, gives uh, a, additional impetus to the process. Then the two regional initiatives which has also been initiated through the process and that is uh, uh, RICO and the Western Balkan funds. This is, so after five years, this is the first year that these initiatives have created uh, a specific input. Now they are established. They, they publish call for proposals. And I think this, this month or next month, they will announce the result. So the way they are constructed, that it covers the whole region and most of the time you need two, three or four civil society organizations in order to apply for a project. So this, this, this could boost also uh, the regional, regional cooperation and as this should, con, uh, should continue. What is the novelty, especially in the, uh, that we will see on the London summit and directly uh, uh, is directed to, to, to the civil society is that until now, in all these three years, the civil society was invited to the summit. So we were always there in the city where it took place, but we weren't present on the main table where you, you see the ministers uh, discussing. So we were, for example, in Paris, we were in a completely uh, other part of the city. Trieste, we were closer, but isolated from, uh, from, isolated from, the, from the decision makers. In the end, what we have uh, succeeded is to organize an event when two or three Three, I think, foreign ministers came, so not all of them, only three came, and they were open for discussions based on the materials that we have produced. What is the novelty in London is that we are going, the civil society is going to be integrated in, in, in the building process. So uh, we still don't know how exactly that will look like, but it's pretty much we are going, all going to sit in the same, in the same building, in the same, in the same room. We'll see how that will develop, but it is good that after four years of implementation, we have managed to integrate the civil society. So not to be like a side event, like it is did, like this one on the main summit, but to integrate, to be present on, on, 
on the on the summit itself. For the future, uh, and, and I will finish here. Um, I think that um, what differs from this five, first five years, let's say, hopefully it will continue, is that uh, the, the process now encompasses even more countries than uh, than uh, than before. Uh, now we can uh, we can say that uh, it was actually Ch Chancellor Merkel that invited Poland to host the 2019 summit. If we are expanding the scope of, of countries which are going to which are going to to, to host this annual summit, uh, I think because of the importance the European the, the, the Western Balkan has for the Southeast European region, I think that the next so after after uh, Warsaw that the host should be from from our region because also much of the bilateral issues are not among the Western Balkan countries. The, this has not been said publicly. Most of the problems are between member states of the European Union from one side and Western Balkan countries. So whatever you want to take Serbia Croatia dispute or Macedonia Greece dispute so they are primarily well major part of the disputes are not among the western balkan countries but are between member states of the european union and the western balkan countries so this is why i think also the the, the pressure and and also greater involvement should be given to the countries from southeast europe which are not uh, which are not part of the western balkan six and here I primarily think about Bulgaria and maybe the next one having in consideration the whole, uh, let's say the atmosphere compromise that we are creating now with the, uh, in the discussion between Macedonia and Greece might be a good idea to uh, Greece to host the summit in uh, 2020. Thank you. Thank you, Zoran.